In this video, we're going to talk about the different ways you can organize your try-catch blocks. Now, here's the code that we used in the last video, this error handling two class. And I created a diagram over here, so this will be a little bit easier to understand for you. And I will also upload this as a paste link, these notes, so you can have these. Now again, here's the code that we used in the last lecture, and we used two try-catches. And you can see that right here. So we had one try catch, and we had code that threw an exception, and then we handled it in our catch block. And the same for the second try catch down here. We had a try block, and the code threw an exception, and then we had a catch block that handled that exception. So basically what we did here, we created try catches for different sets of code. But you can actually dump all of your code into one try block in this scenario down here and then you can create as many different catch blocks as you want that can handle the different types of exceptions that might occur. So this is just another way that you can organize your try catch block. But there is a big difference and that's what I wanna point out. And that is once an exception occurs, the next line will not execute. And I'm gonna show you that in this video. So basically, let's go ahead and just run our old code here in this original class, error handling 2.java. So let's go ahead and run this. And there you can see both exceptions were handled. Now let's flip over to error handling three. And all I've done here is basically duplicated the error handling two class, but we're gonna go ahead and edit this so that we have this model down here. So let's go ahead and close this out. So what we wanna do now is move all of the code in this try block and put it up here. So everything's gonna be wrapped around one try block. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste some of this. And then let's go ahead and take our system.out.print and we'll just put that right here. And now of course we don't really need this try block anymore so let's go ahead and get rid of that. But we'll go ahead and keep the catch block. Now this brings up another point. If you have multiple catch blocks associated with one try block, you wanna put the specific exception classes first. And then the last catch block should have the generic exception class. And so that's what we have right here. So this should catch anything that we miss with the more specific catch blocks. So now we've simulated this model down here. So let's go ahead and run this and you're gonna see what happens now. And look at that, we got an exception occurred. So we hit this last catch block. Now you might be asking the question, wait a minute, why didn't the other code get executed? And that's because of this comment that I put right here. The second line will not be executed. And the reason is very simple. We hit an exception right here, it came down here and the catch was activated, it handled it, and then the program is done at that point. It will not come back to this try block and try to execute this second line. It's basically done at that point. So that may be the way you want your program, but if you want your program to continue, that is, if you want the program to continue after an exception occurs, you need to set your program up with this model right here, this first model that we have in this error handling 2.java. So there's really no right or wrong here. It's really how you want to set up your program. Do you want it to keep executing after there's an exception? If you do, then you need to split your code up into multiple try blocks. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video.